Hello everybody and welcome, I am Paco Garcia. Today I want to cook something for you that I have cooked for my friends and it tastes absolutely delicious. It is a potato and sausage casserole. You can't go wrong with that, come on. And it's, it's insanely simple and tasty. And I was thinking, well, what game will it actually go with? And I immediately thought Perdition's Mouth Abyssal Rift. And I thought, you know, this recipe and this game have absolutely nothing to do with each other. And I thought, okay, I don't care. Because I, I love that casserole and I love Perdition's Mouth Abyssal Rift. It's, it's an absolutely fantastic game, it really is. But I'm going to tell you about it in a little bit. Before that, though, let me show you exactly how to impress your friends with this simple and delightfully tasty dish. Welcome to Dyson Slice. As I was saying at the beginning, we are going to cook this absolutely delicious, delicious dish, which is extremely simple. So um, just sit back and relax while I tell you exactly how to put this dish together. Now, the way that we're going to do this is incredibly simple, trust me, and we have just a few ingredients. Firstly, we're going to need sausages because this is, well, it's a sausage dish. So we're going to have about three sausage if they are these type of thin ones or two if they are the thicker ones. And you can use pretty much any sausage you like. Just be wary of how much people are going to eat. Two large potatoes, so about 700 grams, uh, give or take, or a pound and a bit, more or less. One large onion, a large zucchini or courgette, depending on what part of the world you're in. 150 grams of sliced bacon, fatty one, we, we want the flavor, so fatty. Two cloves of garlic, one stock cube, some pepper, some herbs, and again, this one you can use anything you want. In this one I have some mint, but you could use oregano, um, provenzal herbs, um, basil, whatever you want. Some salt, a couple of slices of anchovies. Now, this, some of you are going to say, oh, anchovies, Ugh. look, the way that we're going to use the anchovies, you will take a look in a second, but we're going to actually stir fry them. When you do that, the anchovies will just dissolve and the thing that will be left behind is no bones, no nothing, because it disintegrates. The thing that will be left behind is a bit of a uh, very salty, slightly fishy flavor. The reason why I'm using this is uh, because the original recipe has was Worcestershire sauce, okay, and I can't pronounce that. I couldn't find it easily in Spain either, so because that thing is made out of anchovies, I thought, well, I'm going to use anchovies. Trust me, they will be amazing. Some olive oil, water, about half a liter, pint, give or take, and about that much, half a glass of white wine. You can put more white wine, but I drank the rest. So. Let me show you how to prepare these things and uh, for that I need to clear the table first. The first thing I'm going to do with my knife in my hand is the cloves of garlic. Um, because it doesn't matter in what order you do it, we're just going to prepare everything. So um, I'm just going to slice it thinly, more or less. It doesn't really matter too much. This garlic is going to be lightly fried, a little bit of olive oil and then it's gonna taste and smell like a little bit of garlicky heaven in my kitchen. All the stew. Right, that's that. Uh, by the way, the last thing I'm going to do is the anchovies because it's going to stain everything with oil. So that's going to be the last bit. First, potato! Like that. Um, and we're just going to slice them. So if you cut them in slices about that thick, you know, like half an inch, give or take. And another one. 
you can put these two together and do this and do that and do that and you have your slice, your dices all done which is what we call this vice look magic and slice because we use dice sis and potatoes I'm just don't worry I'm, I'm just I'm fine trust me I'm I, I am okay seriously um, my, my husband just told me through the headphone that he worries um, but that's okay because he's my husband you don't have to worry about me I'm, I'm absolutely okay Bit. Now, my friends, believe it or not, we have gone through the most complex and complicated step in this recipe, chopping this. Because the onion, my dear, is, we're going to take the bottom bit, we're going to take the top bit I like to do it this way you just slice the side very gently so you can take the first layer of papery onion skin which doesn't really serve any purpose other than to protect the onion and evidently we're not going to eat this get rid of this rubbish and we're just going to leave them in fairly large chunks we don't need to do anything with this because when they cook they're just going to dissolve anyway they're going to separate the layers are going to separate anyway so it, they don't need anything else and lastly this beautiful zucchini courgette, however you want to call it. Um, I would give it a Spanish name, but you wouldn't understand it because it's called calabacín, which means small pumpkin, which I have no idea why. Um, but that's what it's called. And we're just going to slice it in about half an inch thick slices without going anywhere. Make sure that the Cujet, zucchini, whatever, is slightly thicker because this, if it boils too much, if it cooks too much, could dissolve and become very mushy in, in the mouth and it's not a particularly pleasant texture. So be mindful. We put that here. And the last thing that we're going to do is to chop the anchovies and the way I like to do it is literally just put them on a little bundle and chop them very 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 thinly like so my eyes are beginning to itch because of the onion that means that I'm going to take one second to clear my eyes wipe this and get the pan out. I'll be back in a minute. Ah. Right, the first thing we're going to do is medium heat. It doesn't have to be too strong because otherwise everything will just burn. So we're going to put two spoonfuls of oil and to that we're going to add the garlic and the anchovies, yes, all at the same time, and we're going to stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, until the whole thing takes a nice golden color. Let's bring this down a little bit. Okay, once the whole thing is taking a nice golden, beautiful, amazing, mm, yummy color, into our the sausages 
You know, in Spain, we call them longanizas, which is a much longer name than sausages. And there's a very particular reason for doing so. But when you say salchichas, which is a Spanish for these, um, we think about the kind of hot dog salchichas, which is a completely different thing. But we can be a little bit strange like that. Sorry. We're going to brown them until they are nice and brown all over. So don't overcook them because we're going to get a fair amount of cooking afterwards when we add the rest of the ingredients. So this should not be overcookified. It will spit. So be careful. Once they start to brown, it's the time and moment when we add all that bacon in there. And since personally I believe that you can hardly have enough bacon on anything, that'll do nicely. Also the bacon is going to release an awful lot of really flavorsome, nice fat. Why do we want that, I would? You, you'd be wondering, well, well, because that fat is going to be absorbed later on by the onion and the courgette or zucchini, whatever. And once the bacon starts to cook, that's when we add our chopped roughly chopped onion and the zucchini courgette and we give it a good old stir. Now that we've given this a whole nice good stir and things are beginning to get warm and nice, my friends this is when we add the potatoes. And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking that's a lot of food. Yes, yes, because when you have people for games, it may be a lot of people. And quite frankly, if you're going to cook for two, you might as well cook for four, and then you can freeze or otherwise preserve and get it done and dusted with. Come this point, my dears, is when we add about a teaspoon of ground pepper, more or less according to taste, but I like a bit of heat in my food, the herbs, just a touch of salt, seriously, don't overdo it. And now we add the wine. the water and we're going to crumble the stock cube inside as well so it gets nice and dissolved while well, I clean my hands and give this a good old stir Careful, because a lot of water right now is not hot, but it will, it will warm up quickly enough and it could splash some hot water on you, so uh, be very mindful. Right, and uh, now that we have this, we're just going to cook it 10 to 15 minutes until the um, sausages have been cooked through and the potatoes are nice, soft and tender. And whilst that's simmering away. Let me tell you about today's game. 
While that's simmering away, I am going to tell you everything that you need to know about Perdition's Mouth to fall in love with this game, which is absolutely fantastic. Perdition's Mouth is basically a dungeon crawler that will appeal uh, to an awful lot of Euro gamers because it has a really, really important and heavy strategy component to the game. Designed by Timo Multamaki, Thomas Klausner and Kevin Wilson, those really fantastic talents got together to design this one to six players. Uh, Dungeon Crawler plays, should play between one and two hours, but I have to say it depends an awful lot on how many people you have around and how well you know the game, but two hours is a fairly conservative estimate. Now, one thing about this game, which as you can see, I have kept in the original packing because I don't want this to go off. It's absolutely gorgeous. It really is gorgeous. It weighs like half a ton, but six kilos. So it is very heavy. And yes, it has some. I keep this proof. Shoot me. Right, let's take a look. Um, the rules are simpler than they actually feel when you are reading them in the book, which is very well laid out and it's absolutely beautiful. It has everything you know. And funnily enough, this is one of the books that I consider very well structured to teach you how to play the game quite efficiently. So from the instructional point of view, yes, this reads really, really nicely. You will need to refer to it from time to time because there are a fair amount of rules. This is not a simple game by any means, even though the, the basics are actually very innovative and not difficult at all to get to grips with. But you will need, because there are no further of exceptions to those rules, you will need to refer to the book from time to time. But as you can see, it's been really well laid out and it has 34 pages of rules and then some gameplay samples, which is brilliant. Very, very good indeed. Dare I say the game comes with an awful lot of minis and the number of expansions for uh, this game is just insane. I mean, these are just two of them that uh, came with the, with, with the game. I got it. And I like it quite a lot. From the production point of view, they've really spared no pennies in making some insanely beautiful minis. And there are an awful lot of them as well, I can tell you. Like these cultists, for instance. These little minions as well, that you can see here. And some, let me get out some of the monsters because they are so, so very cool indeed. Like this, which is a big body and uh, is quite strong, <laughs> very hard to kill, very, very hard to kill. Um, but they are absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous means. There are a ton of them, by the way, like a lot of them. Now, what makes this game really interesting? Um, firstly, ow, I need both hands. These are the scenario sheets, okay? They come in a box because there are that many. Yes, every single one of these is one scenario. So you're not gonna get bored at all with this game for an insanely long time. It's a really, really long time. And then you get your characters. Now the characters are very interesting because they can they can actually um, level up and let me tell you a little bit how, how they play. You get uh, the type of character it is, and you get four different attributes plus the life that you get. So 
these are the number of actions, this is how far it can go, this is how many hit points they have, these are the damage that they do, extra damage when they fight, and this is their defense value. And they also have a special action that is unique to each character. Depending on the character class, they can be harder or weaker in some things or another, and they can carry more or less items. So they don't all play the same at all, and they offer different uh, um, feel, different experiences when you're playing the game. So you get a lot of bang for your book when you buy Perdition's Mouth. Then we get the boards. The boards are actually double-sided. Really beautiful and really big. It's really, really big. Everything is, um, by the way, yes, they, they don't lay completely flat, which is a bummer and is the one thing about this game I ever sent. But that's the only thing. Um, you get plenty of maps and dungeons to explore with different terrains, different structures, and even different ways to set up each one of these adventures. Um, why? Because it adds an awful lot more um, gameplay to the whole thing. With every single board being double-sided, you get as well very different um, atmospheres to the game. So, and there are like half a ton. This is possibly the thing that weighs the most in, in, in the game. You get one, two, three, four, five, and if I can get my fingers, my fat little fingers, and six. Double sided, that is 12 mats. That's actually quite a nice nice lot. Now what I want to show you, which is the last thing, I'm going to get real of this, and this is seriously heavy. I'm not kidding. Let me... Right, this game has two wheels, and this is where you're going to, how you're going to control what your characters do, and what your enemies do, because well, this can be. This is a fully cooperative game. I forgot to tell you. So the way that the enemies work is with a little bit of a countdown. It's going to be a bead, and every round you're going to draw a card. That card is going to determine what happens and whether the minions or the whatever are going to move. They're going to attack. If they're going to spawn, that's, a, that's really bad news. Um, or if that's a, and how many when they spawn, if they're going to be two, three, four, five, blah, 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 until you are dead in the game. I like this quite a lot. The designers have taken it one step further by creating another wheel, it's a stone, that tells you what your characters can do. Every character can move up to a number of steps, which means that they can move from move to special, to attack, to sprint, to uh, defend, to charge, to rest. And that means that, for instance, defend, you're gonna be able every single round. You, you have to move, and you have to move from one segment to the next or to another one. And that means that you have to very carefully decide what ability you want your character to use because if you don't rest often enough then your character is going to die because there are very very few chances of recovery but then only one player can be resting at any given time so if somebody needs it you have to get out in order to be able to rest so on and so forth this alone makes this game worth it as far as I'm concerned because it's such a unique way of determining who does what and when. This is not like for instance uh, Mansions of Madness in which every character has three actions and they can use it as they see fit. This is not the case at all here. You have to decide where you're going to land, if 
you can land. And if you cannot land there and one of your colleagues needs to get out of it, then they need to decide where they're going to go. So there's a lot of thinking with this game. Personally, I absolutely love it. And seriously, if you are an Euro gamer and you're skeptical about dungeon crawlers, this is the game for you and you should have a go. It's, it is seriously thinky for a dungeon crawler. So take a look. Very, very well worth it. Once you've learned how to play the game, it really is very streamlined and you will spend a lot longer thinking where you're going to go in the board and how or where you're going to go on the wheel than reading the rules. It takes about maybe a couple of games, perhaps three, to get to grips with the rules properly. But other than that, between the beautiful production values, the great mechanics and the absolutely gorgeous maps, and the amount, the sheer amount of missions that you get, you just cannot go wrong with this. But it is time for me to shut up because I can smell something delicious and I better show you the results of our cooking. I'll be right back. And now that we have uh, cooked this for a few minutes, bubbling away quite widely, I have to say, and we've stirred it several times. You may notice that those sausages don't look all that colorful. That's because of the type of sausages they are. They are indeed cooked through, I can assure you, but um, maybe you want to brown them a little bit more if you prefer something a little bit with, with more depth of color. Because yes, I know that this dish is very beige. Not my fault. So, how are we going to serve this? We're going to get three sausages per person and we're going to use a ladle um, because it's still an awful the soup. And let me turn that off. So, three sausages per human. And then as much of this I use as you could possibly ever want to eat, which I can tell you because I have tried to check if it needed any more salt, is going to be quite a lot. My friends, after this, your winter evenings are going to be tastier and warmer because that is perfect, perfect winter food. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today. I am very much looking forward to seeing what you cook. So get this done and send me your photographs and send me your sausages in here because that would be absolutely lovely to see. I very much look forward to doing that. Uh, do spread the show, share it, tell everyone how much I have enjoyed this. And so have you. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so yet and leave me your comments down there. Really looking forward to talking to you very, very soon. Take care.